Let's go down to Rome. So the old saying is the Vikings will win the Super Bowl when there's an earthquake in New York City and when there's a solar eclipse. Our time has come, babe. That, that's right. Uh, and also a big part of that is your Vikings finding their quarterback of the future. And we, we've gotten past the, the combine and the pro days, and now we're into the private workout uh, area. And Quasey been doing his diligence. And, and yes, uh, it was reported last week uh, that the Vikings did have a private workout in Seattle uh, the weekend after Michael Penix Jr.'s uh, workout, uh, or excuse me, pro day. Uh, and yes, it, it, you would expect that Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Dofamensa would be there, probably Josh McCown as well. But what's interesting is that the Vikings reportedly sent everyone they sent the house. Uh, they went full zero blitz, engage eight on the bit with Penix. Uh, Jordan Schultz, Bleach Report. Uh, the Vikings float their their whole staff for a private workout with Michael Penix Jr. in Seattle, including head coach Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Dofamensa. Sources say, I'm told Penix has a top 30 visit with the Raiders today, who currently hold the 13th pick. Now, what, what's interesting, interesting is that he says whole staff. Now, it probably doesn't mean like everybody. Well, like I don't think Durante Jones or Brian Flores or uh, whoever was was flying out there. The defensive staff, you know, Co- Coach Hat. Who, who knows, man? But w- what does whole staff mean? So uh, I don't think that it's hyperbolic, but I do think the Vikings sent a very large contingent. Now, do they do this with every single private workout? Maybe, maybe not. Did they do this with J.J. McCarthy, who they've already reported had the private workout with, or Drake May that they're reportedly going to try and set things up? Who knows? But what what does whole staff mean? Again, we're in the speculation time of year. But uh, d- does that include ownership? Because, I mean, it's probably their jet. So d- did Mark Wilf tag along and be like, hey, I want to take a look at the guy who could be our quarterback for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, O'Connell, yes. Kwesi, yes. Wes Phillips? I mean, it was before the suspension started. Hmm. Uh, quarterbacks coach Josh McCown, that makes sense. Grant Udinsky, who's the assistant OC and assistant QB coach. So that makes sense. Petten is the assistant head coach. And you know, even though Petten has a defensive background, I mean, he, he could give some insights like, well, here's how we, we will get after Michael Penix Jr. First off, my defense will give up 40 points. <laughs> Uh, Brian Angelicchio, the tight ends coach and passing game coordinator, Ryan Cordell, who's also involved in the passing game, it could make sense. But notably, this would be important, especially with Penix, trainers and medical staff. Now, if and when Penix has a top, you know, a top 30 visit with the Vikings, they would be able to do the full suite of uh, battery and medical tests uh, at, at the facility, right? which is going to be big uh, with Penix. Checking out that knee, checking out that shoulder, even though there's already been you know, some medicals at the combine where you know, Penix show great. Uh, the, the whole thing about it is that sending trainers and medical staff, they can uh, converse and kibitz with the medical staff uh, at Washington uh, in, in Seattle. So they can go over things. And the, the whole thing about it too is like the, the, the UW training staff, like had to know everything about Penix. Like, cause that was, uh, I'm sure it was a big thing coming in from Indiana. I'm sure they talked to the Hoosiers medical staff too. And that's the number one thing with Penix and re- respect the the medical and training staff had kept Penix relatively healthy over his uh, two years in Washington. And that doesn't get talked about enough because, uh, yeah, the whole thing about Penix is that injury history. Yes. But you notice they really tapered off, which, you know, it's hard to say that a guy used to be injury prone, but his major injuries occurred from 2021 uh, and before. So who, who knows? But uh, sending the whole staff means. I mean, the Vikings obviously pretty interested. And also, I mean, the Vikings aren't really hiding their their interest in the top quarterbacks, which I I don't think is a smokescreen at all. Um, I think they genuinely want to get a look at Jane Daniels too, but <laughs> it seems like they could be blocked there. But in terms of doing the work on McCarthy and May and Penix, and I'm sure they'll do some work on, on Nix or Rattler too, it does make sense. And I I do think that you know a lot of the draft community is very down very poo-pooing uh, on Penix, but I, I, again, all it takes is one, and uh, it does feel like there's a little bit of steam that he could be a first-round pick, as from Kyle Lindemann. A rap sheet on NFL Network just now. It's been a big week for Michael Penix Jr. I would say at this point he's likely uh, a likely first-round pick, likely to go in the first half of the first round, which certainly would be interesting because I, I still think that Penix is quarterback five just because of, of the medicals, just because of the age, but – Say that uh, four of the top six picks are quarterbacks, which is in now the realm of possibility. And the Vikings at 11, the Broncos at 12, the Raiders at 13. That is beep, bop, bop, boop, first half of the first round. And also, don't don't rule out Seattle at 16. 
I mean, they obviously uh, have seen Penix in their backyard for uh, for a couple of years, and even though they traded for Sam Howell, and even though they do have Geno for a hot second, maybe the new coaching staff want, wants a, a fresh start, clean slate. Who, who knows? But, uh, yeah, I, I could see him going in the top half of the first round. And also, this one's interesting. So, Burt Breer, the Falcons are sending a sizable group to Seattle to conduct a private workout with Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr. today. Uh, per sources, head coach Raheem Morris and GM Terry Fontenot are among those in traveling party, which left this morning. Land holds uh, the eighth overall pick. Now, it would be it would be so funny if after giving Kurt Cousins the four-year $180 million deal with $100 million guaranteed, they just take Penix at eight because – it would be weird because, yes, if the Vikings had brought Kurt back on a one-year deal, I think the Vikings certainly should have been in the market for a quarterback. But there's a big difference between one year and, and two years. And the fact that they gave him two years and change of fully guaranteed money, I feel like if you're the Falcons, you got to go all in because that's your window right now. Even though you have a very young team, if you're going to go – I mean, what was the point of signing Kurt uh, if you're not going to go for the pin in the next two years? And now the Falcons do have pick 43 in the second round. I, I don't think Penix lasts that long. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, but him at eight, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, man. But it, the, the signs are there. It's sending the large contingent. Uh, Kevin O'Connell getting a little bit smiley on the McAfee show when uh, Penix is brought up. And Penix certainly does. So um, D- Daniel Jeremiah had one of the best descriptors of Penix Jr., where he couldn't find like a true blue comparison, which I mean, it's, uh, occasionally there's there's very unique prospects. And with Penix, the left handedness, Penix, the arm strength, like Daniel Jeremiah said, he's the best thrower in this class, which I, I think is fair. I mean, in terms of pure arm talent, like no one lets it ride like Michael Penix Jr. But uh, DJ also brought up concerns like, hey, when there's spots where you need to get up and get down. Put some touch on it. Put some English on a ball. You know, get it over the head of a linebacker. Drop it into the basket. Uh, Penix. I mean, that's still a work in progress. But also, that's the same thing with McCarthy. That's the same thing with uh, Drake May as well. But I, I just see the ultimate upside with Penix. Where if the Vikings, you know, don't get up into the stratosphere and uh, and they don't take you know McCarthy or Daniels or May or whoever, Penix at eleven. And I, I do think you may have to take him at 11. It would be kind of sexy, man. And I feel like there will be a lot of haters coming out of the woodwork. Oh, Penix, he's older. Oh, Penix, oh, the injuries. Oh, Penix, Penix, Penix. But I feel like all of that talk would go away the second that Penix off of play action just drops a 60-yard frozen rope piss missile right into the bread basket of Jefferson and Addison. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's like, Lord, I've converted. Take me. Uh, yeah. Penix, my dear. There you go, man. But uh, again, it's very interesting. Uh, yes, I already confirmed last week that there was a, a meeting, but sending everyone, send in the house. And th- this means that the Vikings aren't effing around, right? They're fully doing their diligence. They're, they're crossing every T and dotting every lowercase J and just getting it, man. And I, I love that they're doing the legwork on all these quarterbacks. That's why I, I do trust that once they do make a decision, He's going to be their guy. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. But uh, your thoughts on our thoughts. Uh, the Minnesota Fighting Vikings uh, reportedly had a, a visit with uh, Panic Jr. where they sent everyone, the, the whole staff. A us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once we'll support the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.